Friday, you made it to the end of the week, or maybe technically this is the beginning of the week and I'm just screwing with you and I've just been saying the wrong day every single day of hot news and you're stuck inside and you don't have a calendar so you can't really tell and you deleted the calendar app on your phone a long time ago. That's the world you're living in. But the world I'm living in is where I get weird existential questions of the day. So let's move on into that. And I passed this one by my wife just to make sure this was okay to ask and she had no problem with it. So if this ends up being really offensive to somebody, you know, I'm sorry. I tried to check with the proper authorities first. <laughs> Anyways, the existential question of the day is, since pregnant women technically have eight limbs, are they actually arachnids? Need answers, okay? Because you got the woman with arms and legs, and you got the child in her arms and legs. Arachnid people. <laughs> I'm sorry, that I, th I thought it was hilarious, so I had to ask it. Let's just move on into the tech news. Let's, let's get away from uh, spiders in case you hate them. spider people, as it were. Which is, AMD is gonna be spidering their way into the special hearts of TSMC because it appears with Huawei trying to move away from TSMC and move over to SMIC, China's own fabrication facility, instead of Taiwan's own fabrication facility, which then you have to ask, aren't they the same thing? Huh? Uh, I mean, who, huh? China, Taiwan, are they different? Yes, here at UFD Tech, China and Taiwan are two different countries. <laughs> Anyways, the whole point about this is that AMD is apparently getting a special node at TSMC for Zen 4 with five nanometers, not just the regular five nanometers that Apple's already getting this year. No, 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 special five nanometer node, which is why at the Financialist Analyst Day, it was actually kind of curious that RDNA 3 and Zen 4 didn't have their nodes listed. It just said future node or more complicated note. It wasn't actually a specification of what they were gonna use. And apparently it's because they've been hammering out the details with TSMC to get this five nanometer speciality. It's gonna be like a secret menu type thing. You know, like when you go to Starbucks and you need a mocha fracchiano, that. I don't know what that is. I'm hard, I'm sorry if that's a bad word in a different language, but yes, TSMC is developing an enhanced five nanometer node specifically for AMD, which hopefully will mean that we get delicious, delicious CPUs and GPUs out of them. I just, I like slurping them up. It's very appetizing. If I could only eat that, I would. But I can eat more Zen 2 processors, which not even Zen 2 processors, these are special Zen 2 processors, and I'll get to it in a little bit. There is now reports of new Ryzen, three chips coming out, the Ryzen 3 3100 and the Ryzen 3 3300X, four core, eight thread, lower end Zen 2 processors. One has a 3.9 gigahertz boost, one has a 4.3 gigahertz boost, but based on the Zen 2 architecture. However, according to the Adore TV leak on this, they're saying that it's not just regular Zen 2, it's not Matisse, it's Matisse 2, because one of the things that AMD did with regular Matisse was have eight core CCXs and it became fine financially unwise for them to make four core CCXs. However, with Matisse 2, it somehow has become financially relevant to do four core CCXs, but that's what these Ryzen 3 chips are going to be. They're gonna be one CCX and not two CCXs with two cores on each CCX because then that becomes financially unstable for them in order for them to have it equal to keep the latency at a minimum. So we actually get the lowest latency possible with just four cores all on one CCX. And it's unknown at this point if Matisse 2 is actually going to be the same setup with the chiplet design or if it's gonna be monolithic like we had on Zen and Zen Plus, but it's still gonna be Zen 2 architecture. So you get all of the goodness with a little bit more complication under the hood, but it's supposed to be really good lower end processors. Hopefully we can keep these in the 100 to $150 price region. I think that would be highly appropriate for what these are. However, in the Adore TV leak as well, they mentioned that they have word that B5 50 has experienced some sort of manufacturing delay and that we should expect those boards in mid-June instead of sooner, which this directly goes in confirmation with the sources that I had last year saying B550 was gonna be Q1 this year. Obviously that didn't happen because we're in Q2 already. So even further delays make sense. Apparently AMD wasn't happy with the design on the B550 motherboard. So they're forcing all motherboard manufacturers to retool it and it'll be coming out a little later. But a little later is how long we're gonna have to wait for the Ryzen 4000 chips, which we now have confirmation from XMG, which is the laptop company that made that chunky boy Ryzen 9 3950X laptop. They confirmed in an AMA over on
on Reddit that it will have an upgrade path because they use a B450 motherboard in that laptop and it will have a microcode update later on to support Ryzen 4000 chips. So at least according to XMG, if they are in the know or maybe they're just forecasting like everybody else, Ryzen 4000 still can exist on earlier generation AIM4 motherboards. Good, good news. And then the last bit of AMD news that we have, that is ASRock has launched the 5500 XT Challenger ITX graphics card. In case you like ITX cards, you now have another choice for you, the 5500 XT Challenger. There you go. Well, let's get back to TSMC. Now that we're done with AMD, they reported their Q1 profits and holy crap, did they make a lot of money. Like you would expect TSMC having issues, you know, not being able to ship stuff out with Voldemort going on, no. Not a problem. They are up 90% in profit in Q1 of this year from the previous year. 90% more cash coming in. They're forecasting that Q2 is gonna be a little less insane, but they're also still going to be making quite a bit of profit. They're expecting revenue to be between 10.3 and $10.4 billion, whereas in their Q1, they hit $3.89 billion in profit. TSMC bringing in bank, which is what we hope Intel will eventually do when they catch up to the rest of the world. And by that, I mean AMD, but we are now just getting more information about their graphics cards. It turns out that the latest benchmark leak of the Gen 12 Project Z integrated GPU is now on par with Vega 8, the integrated Vega 8. So Intel has caught up to AMD, which is good news. We don't want them to be behind, but by the time Tiger Lake launches, we're gonna get Tiger King season two and AMD will hopefully be onto Navi, which would then be better than Vega 8. Nah. But that's not where Intel's focus is, okay? Intel's focus is on quantum computing now, a little bit. They're trying that. And Reese, they got something, they got something really spicy for us. You wanna know what's called? What? Hot qubits, hot. We're bringing you hot qubits on hot news. Guess how hot the qubits are, Reese. We're talking actually hot temperature wise. The sun. One Kelvin. One degree above absolute zero is what is considered to be a hot qubit because qubits or quantum computers have to be run at very close to absolute zero in order to operate. And so they're actually typically measured in milli Kelvin, but it's been found out that Intel and QTech have been able to find a way to make it so that the single qubit fidelities are close to 99.3% with hot qubits or one Kelvin, which means that there is more jiggle room when it comes to the temperature and the cryogenic freezing that typically goes on with quantum computers. So Intel bringing a lot of cool advancements. And by cool, I mean hot, hot, hot advancements here on hot news. Speaking of hot, the hot Intel chips, there's now the latest benchmark of Intel's Rocket Lake. We're expecting Comet Lake to come out in the next few months. Rocket Lake's supposed to succeed that, and it looks like we have an early engineering sample that has appeared in 3D Mark with 1.8 gigahertz clock speeds, which will not be the final speeds. It's an early engineering sample. Hopefully, it'll come late this year or early next year, and maybe catch Intel up just a little bit. I don't know, but now NVIDIA's caught up on their acquisition of Mellanox. This is something that we talked about last year. They were paying $6.9 billion for this company. Well, they've received approval to proceed with that from China's antitrust authority. And I believe that was the last little detail that they needed to go through. And so the closing is expected to happen on the 27th of April in just about 10 days. NVIDIA is not slowing down on the GPU side of thing. They rolled out the DX12 Ultimate Developer Preview Driver so that people can get ready for DX12 Ultimate with that goodness ray tracing that's supposed to be coming out. Have you been playing Minecraft RTX beta? Let me know down below in the comments. But there's also a lot of updates that came out with the RTX driver yesterday. There's new NVENC profiles. Apos Vox dropped a video on that. The beta for RTX sound removal is out. And apparently it sounds phenomenal, like way better than the noise gate in GoXLR. In Epos Vox's video, he was typing on his keyboard. And as soon as it picked up what the keyboard was, as he's talking, you can't hear the keyboard. And it doesn't have any real noticeable noise compression on his voice voice, it just isolates the sound completely because it's using the tensor cores. So there's a lot of cool AI processing stuff that's coming out. That is phenomenal. It is, it was. I was like, dang, okay, that's that's some goodness. And you can use it to mute other people, like you could get it to isolate other people's backgrounds if you have them on Discord. It's wicked. What's not wicked, according to me though, are these limited edition Cyberpunk 2077 controller and console. These got leaked, they're supposed to be announced in a couple days, which I don't know why they didn't announce them yesterday because yesterday was supposed to be the actual release date of Cyberpunk 2077 before it got delayed until September. So releasing it yesterday would have made a lot more sense. May 4th is the release date listed on Amazon. Regardless, I don't, I don't think they're anything special. I actually think they look kind of gross. As far as special editions go, these 
these are quite ugly looking. Yeah, unless they have like some texture on it that I'm not seeing from the picture, it just looks like a vinyl sticker put on top. And I just, I think that's pretty cheesy. The, o the only special edition that I was like, dang, I really want that was the Death Stranding PS4 because it had the handprint in the maps and I love that, that made me happy. This makes me just like industrial. You know, it's industrial as well, pod racing. And that's what I call pod racing because classic Star Wars pod racing game is coming to the PS4 what? and Switch on May 12th. I grew up on that game. Star Wars Episode One Racer coming PS4, Switch, May 12th, not on May 4th, which is Star Wars Day. I did get your marketing right. Come on. But Zooks needs to get their money right because they have to settle with Tesla on trade secret theft because Zooks was a self-driving car company and apparently they had Tesla documents that helped with their autonomous driving and uh, you know, Tesla won that legal battle. And I'm gonna win the legal battle against my body by telling it to recline in this gaming sofa from Cougar. Look at this beautiful thing. The Cougar Ranger. It can recline, Reese, 160 degrees. Cougar, are you listening to hot news? Cause I want one. Send one over for review. I would make it our hot news chair, hot news sofa, okay? You send me a Cougar Ranger, perma presence on hot news. It's gonna release on April 22nd. It's gonna go for $280, which isn't all that expensive when you compare them to other gaming chairs that are out on the market. Those are typically three to $500. So $280 for something that is a bit comfier. And honestly, I would prefer. I think it's stupid that it's a gaming sofa, but I want one. Gaming branding just doesn't get me. But you know what doesn't get me? Stadia but they have new updates, stay in new updates. Like you can uh, set your gaming profile to say that you're not online because you don't want your friends to know that you're playing Stadia. But then that also means that they have a Stadia account and so you have terrible friends. But also they've updated to support 5.1 surround sound on their web players, as well as an on-screen keyboard and mobile device data quality notifications. So Stadia continuing to update, just not in my heart. But Riot's continuing to update their portfolio of games. Obviously we have Valorant that's recently dropped in a closed beta on Twitch. There's also the Legends of Runeterra stuff that's coming out and they have now bought the makers of a combat heavy Minecraft clone known as Hypixel, which is making the game High Hail. There's no details on how much it was made for or if High Tail is still going to be releasing, but it just look, it does look like a Minecraft knockoff, but with more combat orientation. But now Riot owns them and Riot's expanding their portfolio and Apple is expanding their portfolio of audio products with over-the-ear headphones, according to a Bloomberg report. But we've heard this already that we were getting over ears, but now the special news about that is that they're gonna have hot swappable ear cups potentially that are magnetic. And so you can switch between like sporty and at home, which I would love. I've been running with my Apple watch band and I only have this one fabric band and it stinks. It stinks. I really need to get a different one. So I would I would gladly welcome this, but I don't run with over ear headphones. I don't like the way that they vibrate on my head like that or jiggle. And then they make this noise. That doesn't settle right with me. But what settles right with me is the game that we all need this year. We needed this. Okay, so this is a huge win for gamers. Okay, this is a huge win for everybody because I finally have a release date for the most anticipated game of the year, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Release date for all platforms, PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch, June 23rd. I think I'm ready. <laughs> That was terrible. Oh, you know what else is terrible? The existential question of the day. Since pregnant women have eight limbs, are they technically arachnids? I don't know why that's the question, but it is. Well, you guys have a good weekend. We'll see you tomorrow with a non-hot news video. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch for our daily live streams, twitch.tv forward slash Disciple. You guys following and supporting us over there means the world. We love live streaming. It's a lot of fun. Getting to talk to you directly is phenomenal. So show up there, show up at your house. Go to sleep or whatever. I don't care. Bye. Was it in March that we did that? Was it in March? When did these things happen? I'm forgetting days.